jQuery mobile allows you to make buttons that are really look like they're meant for a mobile device and so they're very uh, clean they're very uh, they adapt to whatever size of screen that you're on and uh, they really with just a simple couple lines of code allow you to make um, a mobile compatible button that uh, you can use for pretty much anything now we're going to talk about what those types of buttons are how they look and then we're going to get into the code and we're actually going to build those types of buttons so let's go ahead and just take a look at it and I have my simulator pulled up already and this is within an HTML file that you can download as a sample file and you can see that we have a basic markup button this is just a regular anchor button we have um, a regular button tag as well and then we have the old style which is what the buttons look like in previous versions previous to 1.4.2 then we have how to apply corners shadows inline allows you to have it so it doesn't automatically adapt to the content how there's theming mini buttons icons icon positions so we have left right top bottom and so forth icon position inline so if we wanted to do it inline this is how it would look um, even a button with an icon but without any text icon shadow and then a disabled button to really use these inside of your projects, I want to go through each of these contents and show you how to adapt disks into or how to use these different types of buttons, how to position them. And that way when you actually are ready to use a button inside of your content area, you're, you're ready to go and you know the different options available to you. So let's go ahead and for now we're just going to focus on, we're going to get rid of the footer inside of our HTML file. We're going to focus on the content area. So I'm going to just wrap this up inside of let's say a p tag and I'm gonna say different button examples and then right after that I'm gonna go ahead and start adding my button now you add a button by doing an href tag and then if you don't know where this is gonna to link to yet just add a hashtag especially if you know that it's going to link to uh, some other page within your HTML so I'm just going to add a hashtag. The only other thing I need to do to actually make this as a button is add the text itself. So I'm going to say button. And then I'm going to come in and add a class attribute. Previously, you would add a data dash role equals button for the old versions of jQuery mobile. But for some reason, in this case, we uh, jQuery mobile has decided to switch to adding classes instead of uh, data dash role for the buttons at least. So I'm going to say class and then I'm going to say UI dash BTN button and that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Let's go into um, my browser here. I'm going to go ahead and hide my simulator and in my browser I'm going to refresh and you'll notice now my button has a hover state um, and it has a down state as well automatically and the only thing I needed to do was to add this class. Well, let's say I want to add, this is a rectangle, and so you can see that it has sharp corners. But let's say I want to add some corners. Well, all I need to do is continually forward the different options is to add different types of classes. The way that you do that inside of HTML is add a space between each class. So in this case, it's still the UI-button, but now I'm going to add a UI-corner-all. Now I can define certain corners or I can define uh, certain elements to have corners or certain edges to have corners. But in this case, I'm going to apply for all. And now if I hit uh, refresh on my browser here, you'll notice that it's really hard to see, but it's on the small corners is now rounded edges instead of uh, a rectangle sharp corner edges. If I don't, if I decide I don't want that, I can go ahead and just delete that part. And as long as I leave a space in between the BTN and then uh, whatever other attribute or class I'm going to apply, then I should be okay. Well, let's say I want to add a drop shadow to have it just really pop here. Well, all I have to do is add another class. So I'm going to say UI dash shadow and hit save. And you can do this on any element, basically. If you have an image or if you have um, other types of list views and you wanted to add a drop shadow, all you have to do is add a class of UI dash shadow. Now you can see as I refresh my HTML, I have a nice looking shadow that just makes my uh, my button pop a little bit more out of there. So that's how you add a shadow. Let's go ahead and explore some other options here. The next option is inline. You'll notice on this button, it automatically takes 100% of the content minus uh, some margin space on the left and right. 
but it takes 100% of the content no matter what my screen size is. Well, if I want it to be in line, if I want it to actually only take the amount um, with a couple with some padding as whatever text I have here, well then I have to add an inline attributes to or in an inline class to the button. So in this case, I would say UI dash BTN dash inline. We're telling the button to be an inline button. Now, if I hit refresh, it does not take 100% of the screen real estate as I resize it here. It only takes the amount of space as the actual text. And so if I type in more text, it will automatically adapt and make it bigger, but I still have padding on the left and right, but I still does not, it still does not take 100%. That way, if I have more than one button, let me copy that and paste it, it actually has the button one after the other. It's in line. Uh, with the other buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that and we're going to delete the class attributes and let's just explore some other things that we can do with these buttons.